What was it that made you want to go into the world of being a venture capitalist? I was professionally trained as a data scientist my first job. Um, and effectively what I spent time doing was helping big companies uh, build software and products that allow them to utilize their data in a more efficient way and um, have um, better decision making power based off of that. And it's really what gave me entry into the startup world because I had an experience where I was writing the back-end algorithms and then managing teams of engineers and sort of seeing a product from the early phases of development through to sort of the full end product, so kind of nothing to full build. And um, it sparked my interest in sort of the space. I realized I loved the process of, of development and, and seeing a company kind of get from the early phases and build those early products and see how they iterate over time. Um, I wanted to join a startup myself, actually, and so I went to um, MC10, which is a stands for materials company. It was an um, electronic startup, and I worked on the um, data and software side and product management. And I also worked closely with the VCs. It was actually my first exposure to VC. Um, was very curious about what they did and sitting on the other side of the table. And I um, serendipitously, I had a friend who invited me to come work at this early stage seed fund in Boston. And so that was the foray into sort of my first experience with VC. And I immediately realized how um, happy the job made me and how much meaning I derived from the, the work I was doing. And I think it sort of hit on sort of my own curiosity around um, advances in technology, um, sort of what the future holds. And then I was also just very inspired by the founders I worked with every day. Um, sort of it sparked my imagination and, um, and I think sort of the reason that I do this still today, and I think for most people, hopefully, it's in part it's sort of this magic of um, human connection and really it's, it's what keeps you in this job because you know, there'll be a lot of ups and downs. Um, but I never get tired of sort of hearing people's stories and asking them what brought them to the table. Um, and sort of what motivates them, and then trying to partner with um, amazing people to build companies. So um, I, on a daily basis, feel humbled and inspired by the people sitting across the table from me, and it makes it the best job in the world. It also motivates me to do the best in my own job. One of the things that we see right now when it comes to investments is that uh, many times when we're talking about moving the dial, uh, female founded companies aren't in being invested in at the same rate perhaps as their male counterparts. Yeah. What is your opinion of that? Well, I think um, it is a, um, it's a symptom of a larger problem. Um, and I think it, a lot of it does start from sort of the STEM education um, opportunities we should be providing to young women. Um, and then I think um, sitting in the seat of an investor, I think it is our obligation to make sure we're seeing those companies and bringing as many in the door and to have it as part of our own um, goals and mission statement to, to be investing in a diverse founders. I also think it's important to be, have that diversity of perspectives. So, you know, we, we talked before about sort of the opportunities in healthcare and sort of how women are the um, main buyers of healthcare for the home yet there are very few female founders in the healthcare tech space. And so when you try to backtrack and say, why is that? I, I do think it's something that's um, symptomatic and the ways that I think I can contribute to helping solve that problem is just trying to increase the funnel initially. I think there's a statistic that says, um, if you reach like 30% of uh, the change in the uh, funnel is the tipping point. And so you can't just, you know, check a box and say, I saw one, you need to really be pushing the partners and yourself to hold yourself accountable to make sure that you're um, encouraging uh, those companies to come in the door and to have a seat at the table. And, um, and I think that will be sort of the initial way that we see headway into like investment into female founders. Um, and then as well, you know, I try to work with my portfolio companies to find awesome female founders and hire co-founders and hires as well. Um, so I can't mandate the companies that I work with to do that, but I think is sort of like setting an example and working with them to find those people um, can be one way to, to contribute. And then I, I think the last thing is, especially as an investor, um, holding yourself to certain metrics and publishing those metrics really makes it real for you. And I think it makes it real for the partnership. And I think not enough of us um, like we'll go through the list of companies we've met in a given month or week 
or over the whole year and say, you know, what percent were coming from minority backgrounds and sort of how am I expanding my own view of the world from diverse backgrounds. So, and then eventually, I'm confident that we'll show women are incredibly, and in, not, you know, more successful um, than women and other minority groups, um, than sort of like the traditional profile of a founder. Because if you look at stuff like, you know, in the hedge fund world, for example, they've already shown that like women and minority investors actually have higher performance than their counterparts. And we still need to track and um, get that data to um, come to light and, and be sort of the forefront of research. But um, I think that's what makes me optimistic.